Okay, to interrupt, we got two minutes to start. So I'm going to give you presenter, Xiang Xiang, so you can set up. All right. All right. You can start whenever you want, but like that way we will be on time for things. All right. We can have a crazy lunchtime talk session later. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I love it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I have no pictures or anything to share. I'm just talking so people can look at my face later. <laughs> no, that'll be interesting. And uh, my Batman logo shirt. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> um, someone uh, asked about the Q and A, uh, where they they can ask the questions. Kind of yeah, wondering so the same. What will happen is, is that at ten minutes or after this talk ends, you know, scheduled at eleven twenty, then there will be a five minute Q and A. There should well, there should be a five minute Q and A after. So the Q and A is wrapped into this the time on the schedule. Yep. Oh, that's yeah, good planning. Yeah, but the five minutes of course, also for setup, so I will probably pass it to the next guy while Q&A happens. And you guys just kind of monitor the chat if, if I'm too busy to monitor and just kind of repeat out the question so the recording can catch it because this Discord is not recorded. And yeah, and that's it. Ah, oh, okay. Yep. Got it. Thanks. And you guys can tweet like hell, I guess. People are putting out Twitter tags. Uh, there's also the VNCOMP 2019 people thing that's on the screen or was on the screen, that's the sign-up sheet for who the hell everyone is for networking purposes. Feel free oh, to yeah. use that. <laughs> and time is about up, so OK. You can start talking whenever you would like. All right, so this is it. Woo. All right, let's start. Yeah. OK, cool. So hi, everyone. Welcome to VNCOV 2019. And since all of, most of us here are primarily making PC visual novels, I'm starting off with mobile games. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, uh, I know uh, Tom from Rempai is, is here as well, uh, but I'm talking about mobile games instead. But uh, I think it's, <laughs> yeah. But I think it's also like, a sign of the times that we are starting off this year's conference with um, visual novels on mobile because the market is growing in this space like so rapidly. Uh, this is the reason why I have these stats up here. I hope you can all see them. Uh, <laughs> so the light blue at the bottom is console games in general and the green one above that is PC games and you can see how they are both pretty still, they're increasing, but they're still pretty stable for the most part. And then you have mobile games on the top, the dark blue on top, and it's just going So yes, um, in fact, if I can do this, uh, total mobile gaming revenue for the first quarter of 2018 was double that of McDonald's globally. So imagine everything that McDonald's earns and double that. That's how much mobile games are making right now. And out of all these mobile games, interactive story games, which are basic, they call in, in uh, mobile devs, they call them interactive story games, but we all know what they are. They are VNs, right? They are visual novels. Uh, they are just usually skinned to, the, the aesthetic is usually more Western more tailored towards uh, Western teenage girls. And these are doing like incredibly. Like for example, uh, you can see these are seven of the top, uh, on the screen here, these are the seven of the top visual novel apps on, uh, on, the, on Google Play and App Store right now. And uh, for example, episode has 50 million installs and Choices has 10 million installs. Like that is just a crazy amount of players playing these games. And uh, to give you a sense of the scale of these things, episode is ranked at uh, number 20 in terms of uh, top grossing apps on the App Store, which is uh, iOS, which means that it is higher than Clash Royale and Fate Grand Order uh, if you play Fate FGO. Uh, yeah, episode is more is earning more money than FGO, which is like a gacha game. So, and choices for Google Play is uh, at the 43rd top grossing. And it's 
grows is earning even more than Fire Emblem Heroes. Uh, if you want, uh, I'm just going to like recap all of these, just so because I know there are some people here who might not be familiar with the uh, mobile visual novel uh, type of games. But there, last year at VNConf, uh, Frank Zhang also made a really good talk about that covers this topic in more depth. So this is relevant to my talk today because because of the popularity of these games. Everyone wants to copy their success, which means there are tons and tons of like smaller, more, more indie companies out there who are trying to break, break into this same market, which means there's more opportunity for writers to be able to write for these games. Uh, I know that at least one other person here, JD, has written for Voltage before. So uh, if you have anything you want to add or, or uh, talk about your experiences as well, please feel free to share in Discord or anything later. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, oops, OK. So since uh, most of you here are a bit more familiar with the, the PC, PC visual novel kind of scene. Uh, here is, we are probably more used to seeing like visual novels that are super long. They are usually catering towards guys that are a bit older. This is, this is what the mobile industry's uh, visual novels are catering towards. They are usually female and they are usually very, very young. You can see uh, <laughs> nearly 45% of players who play these games are 10 to 15 year old girls, uh, followed by 16 to 20, 21 year old girls. Uh, these are the same kind of people who will write stories and read stories on Wattpad. Yeah, back in my day, we did fan fiction net, and now we've all migrated to AO3, but the kids, the kids, they're all on Wattpad, and they're all playing all these like visuals on mobile. And the well, part of the reason why it's making so much money is because girls actually spend a lot more time playing mobile games and they are also more likely to spend money on mobile games. So uh, there's a stat by Delta DNA that says that, that female players are 44% more valuable than male players when it comes to mobile games in general. So that's part of the reason why VNs are doing so well and so well in the, in the mobile space. Uh, for me, I haven't worked with any of the big companies yet, like Choices, Episode, or Voltage, like JD has. Uh, if you want to hear a talk by a writer who worked for Choices, uh, it's actually also available in last year's VN conference. You can go listen to it. It's by Brandon. Uh, these are the games that some of the games that I've worked on. You can see that the downloads are still pretty okay for a mobile game. It's 100K downloads. The ratings are good. But the reason why uh, the, this two on the left are good is because they're using completely a completely free to play model, which means that uh, unlike most other free to play mobile apps, these ones, uh, they are only supported by ads. So the rating tends to be higher uh, because of uh, because players like that they can just like read the entire story without any story tickets or having to buy a IAPs, they can just read the entire story for free. Uh, but that's also the reason why this company isn't actually doing as well. Uh, I think they've actually stopped producing new games. Whereas this one on the right here called Heartbeat, it's very much based on the choices model. So you have to watch ads in order to get hearts, which allows you to read new chapters of stories. And you also need to use diamonds, which are premium currency, to unlock special choices in, inside the store itself. So this seems to be doing a bit better. It's like 500k downloads. And as you can see, uh, the heartbeat model and the choices model, and most of, the, most of the successful players in this space, they are going with the omnibus model, which is you have a single app uh, and which has lots of different stories in it. 
The reason for this is because you want the players to, you want to drive the players to a single app uh, and keep them there and have them come back to your app over and over again so that eventually they might spend uh, money on it. Right. Okay, so this is what they, what, um, what one of these games usually looks like. Uh, if you're used to writing for PC games, right, this looks very different from what you might be used to. For, so for example, look at the text box. It's freaking tiny, right? In fact, for one of the first games that I wrote, I was writing a spreadsheet and I couldn't pass like a hundred characters for each line because uh, because it was just not fit into the text box. So I had to, so uh, we actually structured the spreadsheet so that a warning, uh, it, would, it would actually count my characters as I wrote and the character, the box would turn red once I passed a certain character once I pass a certain character. So, uh, I pass a certain character count. So basically you have to be very conscious of what you write. You have to make the most out of a very tiny space. Um, but I also think that this was an interesting challenge because this means that you really have to have really short, snappy dialogue, something that will hook people immediately and so on. Uh, so this is something that you should consider as well. Even if you're not making a mobile VN, if you're making one on PC, you also need to take account how your UI looks and how much you can uh, try to fit into space and also how, how quickly you can bring the reader into the story by, by moving the story along like really quickly. Okay, uh, the next thing that you need to pay attention to is the choices in these games tend to be very linear in the sense that they'll branch out and they'll immediately recombine into the same thing. So there's no, there's no, there's usually no stat tracking. Um, I think choices does some, but usually what happens is that you have a choice and then you, you see the characters react to your choice and then it just immediately recombines. This can still but the most important thing is that even though the choices don't have long-term consequences, as long as it feels uh, very interesting to the player in the moment, like you can still get a very engaging experience even though you don't have the stat tracking. The reason why they don't have uh, stat tracking or long-term consequences is that it's much easier to write when the choices recombine immediately. And for a mobile game where you have to push out so much content quickly, uh, they want to have the most efficient way of, of turning out a story as possible. But I also got reviews on my story saying that, oh my God, I was so, it was so hard to make this choice. I felt so short. I was so emotionally, I had so much like emotional investment in making these choices, even though they didn't have long-term consequences. So that's also something you can consider when making choices in your own game as well. Don't worry too much about having like do stat tracking and so on, as long as you think about what the player is experiencing in the moment. Uh, finally, the, the most uh, different thing that you might, you might be seeing on this screen right now is the premium choice. Uh, premium choices are a feature of mobile VNs so much because uh, usually you can just play the entire game for free, right? but there has to be some way of like monetizing the player. So these choices are usually how you do it. You usually get like a sexy scene or a romantic scene or so on, but it has to be something that is not relevant to, uh, that, that doesn't really impact the main story, right? Uh, which usually what happens when you have these premium scenes is that you don't want to make the player feel like they are being pushed into doing it. You want it to be tempting, but at the same time, you don't want the player to feel bad about doing it. So it can be pretty hard to balance. And uh, finally, something that uh, I think I'm a bit over time, so I'm just going to quickly wrap up. Uh, another thing that my editors always told me when I was working on this game is that uh, when it comes to backgrounds, our players, especially on mobile games, they lose interest really quickly. So you need to keep things moving to keep their interest. So backgrounds, for example, 
we would always like uh, ask, uh, the editors would always ask me to try and uh, change backgrounds pretty frequently so it doesn't feel like they're staring at a static screen for too long. Um, and I think that's as much as I can get to, sorry. Uh, so do you have any questions so far? Sorry, but I think I'm over time. Yeah, we'll deal with it. That's what lunch hour is for. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just stop here. All right. Sure uh, you guys can, we'll hold questions. So uh, yeah, you can actually say ask a couple of questions while I let the next speaker set up. Let me give presenter over to them. The, the, the steam girl. Okay. Trick presenter. Yay, but so much mobile. Yeah. I'd say of the of the uh, of the mobile uh, studios out there, which which do you like best? Actually, I'm curious. Which do you like best? Which model do you like best? You know, um, and uh, and and where do you think you know? And which one do you think will end up being top dog? That's always, that's always oh. the best one, right? Which 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 horse do you think will win the race? Because it is. Oh race. God! <laughs> because um, I actually think that. Uh, from what I've seen so far, episode seems to be pretty solidly on top of the rankings of like the top grossing apps every time. And the reason why I think this is because unlike all the other like cho uh, choices games in the market, it has a player. It has a player generated system. Like you, oh. any player is basically like a combination of a uh, visual novel and Wattpad okay. or fanfiction.net. So like anyone, anybody at all, you. You can go there right now, and uh, <laughs> I actually had this prepared on my slide, but you can actually go there right now and write a story and publish it on his app immediately and get feedback. One of his writers oh. has, like, yeah, it's super cool. And one of one of their writers has like, oh, I don't know, like more more Instagram followers than choices and love struck combined. On Instagram. How did that happen? <laughs> I have to investigate yeah. this. I'm so busy to... writing, I don't get to look at other studios. So <laughs> I know, same. Yeah. I, I I'm also like always so busy writing. Like I <laughs> it's hard for me to have time to like play too much of other studios. But um if exactly. you're talking about yeah, if if you're talking about games uh, studios I actually like I actually probably like Love Struck the most. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Please continue. Thank you. All right. We're for time, so we can we'll continue. We can all talk about this during lunch because we have a yeah, whole sure. block of time for that. But 